Welcome everybody to Teach You Crypto. This is AZ Crypto with Mr. FOMO. Hey, we're a day late, but that's okay because we have an amazing show today about an amazing project. Al Ron, also known as Al Gold. But before we get into Eagle, uh, Mr. FOMO, we got some movement today on BATC. Now, depending where you are, some people are like me, kind of on the sidelines waiting to get in. Some people have already gone all in and some people have kind of, you know, put their foot in the water. Uh, we were looking um, pretty good yesterday in terms of movement. We got above 39. But if you remember last week, I gave out that number 39.6 as a major resistance. That's what my research was showing. Again, I'm not a TA expert, I'm not going to claim to be one, but the people I follow that I trust, they were a lot of them were saying around that 39, 36 mark, give or take a couple hundred dollars. We didn't hit it. And we're staring right now at 36.8. We're actually down for over four and a half percent today. Not a major drop, but it's it just shows you that anyone that was predicting we were just going to go straight up was probably living a pipe dream. Uh, what do you think is going on right now? I think I think we've got a lot of price discovery. It's healthy for it. Like like Dom said a couple of weeks ago, it's healthy for it to uh, spend some time at these levels, build up some strength, and eventually it'll break through. They, you know, there, it, there's an old idea that it, it, if it keeps banging on the door, eventually it's going to break it down and it'll bust through. And, and like you said earlier, if it does have another drop and there's a bunch of buying momentum, it may it may break through that real quickly. So yeah, I, what I was reading not healthy at all. I think I think this sideways or a little bit downward action is is nice and healthy for it. Now, would you say what, what would be unhealthy if we went below 30 at that point? Would you be concerned or would you see it as, hey, under 30, it's going to last maybe minutes, maybe an hour. You get back up to 33, 34. You have a ton of money more into the market now, especially if BTC. You got a bunch of people that bought in the low 30s again. It was in the low 30s last time. There was still a lot of fear and a lot of people passed. And I don't think that would be the case. And I'm not saying this is yeah. going to happen, but if we continue downward for the next 48 to 72 hours and we saw a 33, 32 BTC, and it's going to take a lot. And this is a lot. This is manipulation. And you guys know that by what by watching us. Uh, it's going to take a lot of manipulation to get down there. But if we did get down there, I think you would you would have a lot more brave buyers. And I think the alts would really um, get some strength that they're lacking right now because a lot of people have not come back in. And a lot of new retail has not come in because of the fear. And so knowing and the people that are doing their research, knowing that BTC, you know, in the 20s has so much support. I think if we did see 32, I actually think it would be healthy. That's my point of view. And I think it would be easier for us to break that 39.6. We talked about that 40K as a, uh, a kind of a psychological barrier. We get over 40K. The next number uh, I'm looking at is 44. And if you get over 44, I really do believe you have a full pump. I really think at that point you're getting above 55, uh, maybe 60. We're getting way ahead of ourselves. But I, I actually think this could be um, healthy. And if you haven't gone in, uh, and, and not financial advice, and you are planning to get back in the alts, well, Friday might be the day for you because we might have some amazing picks. And we're going to talk about Elrond today. And Elrond is an amazing project. And it, it's, it's, they have a great team, which you're going to talk about. But I, I briefly wanted to discuss kind of the math that went with Elrond. And it, it's, it's a project that we're both excited about, uh, really. And, and here's the deal with Alrond. And I was looking this up to get the most updated information. Uh, Alrond right now has a circulating supply of 20,482,089. Now, I did not get that wrong. Sometimes I get my billion and million mixed up. It's that low. And for crypto, if you don't know, that's that low. 11.3 million is staked. The floating supply is 9,180,000 at the time of this recording. And so we've got, the, we've got a market cap right now under 3 billion. And, and for a project you're going to talk about. Remember that almost 1.7% of that was never converted from the old token ERD. So whatever that circulating supply is also includes that 1.7% that's never coming back. And you want to know an amazing number. And this is something that's very unique in crypto. I haven't seen very, I haven't seen very few legitimate projects that have this number. The total max supply ever. 31.4, that includes the number you gave of the ones that can never be sold. Um, so we're looking right now at a price of 141. Ladies and gentlemen, November 17th, 
This is kind of when we started our downward action here. 554.45, okay? Uh, Elrond, very engaging community. You go on Telegram, you go on Twitter, uh, any social media that, that, that they are in, Discord, they have a passionate. In fact, in terms of activity and sentiment, they were only ranked second to Cardano last year, believe it or not. And this is a project that's not listed everywhere. I mean, I don't think you can even buy it on Coinbase. Uh, so the, the 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 future is bright. And, you know, we talk about ETH killers. I don't like to use that term. I like to think of it as who's going to steal some of ETH's uh, business away? Is it going to be Algorand? You know, is it going to be Cosmos? Is it going to be HBAR? And I think Elrond is a huge contender. They've got ties right now in Miami. They're working with the mayor in Miami. I mean, they're really working hard. Um, and I just look, I'm looking at that price right now and I'm saying, again, not financial advice, but if you want to slowly layer in, and the reason why I say layer in versus go all in, because BTC right now, for me, still very unpredictable. I could easily see some downward action in the next two, three, four days, possibly. Um, we don't, we just don't know. But if the lowest it got this month was 111, which is an amazing price. If we go down in that area, I mean, I might have to double dip and bring this back on Friday for, <laughs> we might have to talk about it again. Because at 111, at 111, under 3 billion, uh, volume today is 96 million, which, you know, it, it's been much higher, but still on a down day with that low of a cap, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm just high on this project. I think I think this blockchain's got a big future. And again, I'm not, I don't think it'll ever get as big as ETH, but again, I don't think ETH will be as big as ETH. Um, but you found out some very good information about some of the leadership team. So why don't you take it away? Yeah, there's a couple of things I want to mention. First, you you talked about uh, ETH killers, and and I don't think there's ever really going to be that. I think they were first to to market, and they'll kind of always be there. Um, but you mentioned taking market from ETH, and I think one day the crypto market will be more diversified, and we'll think of market dominance like we'll say, you know, Bitcoin has a market dominance in the store of value sector. And, mm -hmm. you know, ETH has a market dominance in the L1 sector. And this one has a market dominance in, uh, in NFTs. And gaming. we'll start to classify, yeah, gaming and, and metaverse. And we'll start to classify these a little bit more and consider market dominance against other like. Great cryptos. point. And I think that that will, will show us a little bit more. And, and that'll show us exactly what you're talking about. People starting to steal some of that dominance from ETH, which is already starting to happen. Um, this actually is the second largest proof of stake blockchain behind ETH. So you wow. said the second most active community. Well, they've also got the second largest uh, proof of stake, uh, stake blockchain. They've got 3,200 validators. That means that they are the second most decentralized. They've got over 10,000 servers. Um, they just reached 30 million transactions. They've got 1.2 million ac accounts. So adoption is way up. Um, they've got lots of experience on their team. Um, you've got tech competition winners. You've got the, the, the founder of, I think, the first uh, exchange, crypto exchange in Romania is working mm -hmm. with them. Also, a side note, you have the greatest neck beard in crypto in one of their core developers or in their core developer. He has an awesome neck beard. I think it is the greatest neck beard in crypto. But if you get a chance to check out that website, you've got to check it out. He worked hard on that. Um, another interesting fact on this one, I mentioned the 1.7% that's never going to come back. There has been some FUD about eGold and talking about large whale wallets. And the top 10 wallets for eGold are actually all exchanges. And then behind that, you have staking for smart contracts and vested funds for the team and the foundation. And so you really have a, 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 a real focus on decentralization, not only in the network, but also in how spread out their tokens are among the retail investors versus the original team or the big whale investors. Um, and you can stake as little as one e-gold in, the, in their Mayer wallet. And it will only cost you 0 0.0002 e-gold gas fee. Wow. So yeah, it, and you're, ta you're talking about all of these great 
you know, technicals, all of these great numbers, that great team. And you can see why we really like this and why we think it's going to take some of that market dominance from ETH. And I'm looking just to double check. They're not yet on Coinbase. They are on Voyager, of course. If you want to get in on Voyager, now would be a great time. Take a look at our down below. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. We're looking for more subscribers. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the potential here, we're just scratching the surface. It's kind of like getting in on Cardano early. We talked about this. People look at Cardano's dollar and they think it's low. They don't really look at the market cap and realize where it was, where the dollar came from. Here, you know, we're in the hundreds. We, we hit 500 before Thanksgiving, a week before Thanksgiving. That wasn't that long ago. And some people still have that turkey in their stomachs. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. I mean, the, the, again, this is predicated. We are going to say predicated on BTC. We don't know what's happening right now. There are so many philosophies about where we are in the cycle. I mean, I just know this. Unless we're an extreme bear, Elron below 150 is very tantalizing if you do the research and look at the numbers before. And if we do get some more downward movement, and, you know, who knows? I'm not predicting this, but if we get down in the 120s, the 115s, even the 130s, I mean, that that's great opportunity. Again, you got to remember to take right? profits. Got to remember to take profits. But for me, I'm going to say, is this a buy? I'm going to say absolutely yes. And again, I would tear in slowly. I would not, not financial advice. I would not put all of the money I'm planning to invest at Elrond tonight. You got to watch BTC over the rest of this week, maybe even into yeah, next week. Um, but again, once we get over 39.6, um, there's a decent chance that we are we are headed for some positive momentum. And so we're, we're below that now. Um, so if you believe in this project, that's the other thing I was going to say. There are very few alts I would want to hold long term. We talked about VGX and how special and rare because of the utility. Now, if you forced me to take an alt uh, and you said I could not sell it for the next five years, this would be high on my list. Because I think I think the, you know, I think it's going to be around. I don't think it's going anywhere. And I, I think the price, yeah, and, and any type of bear, obviously we're going to have a huge drop. But I, I I think in four or five years, if if crypto is where I think it is, this one hundred dollar is going to sound silly. This these prices under one fifty are just going to be silly. So this is one I would not recommend holding alts for several years. But this is one I would say would be one of the safest to do. Just because of the potential, I think we're just scratching the surface. I talked about Miami. Uh, what do you think? Would you buy right now and why? I am a buyer and I don't think we made a big enough deal about supply shock. And, mm -hmm. you know, Great we talk point. about Bitcoin all the time at 21 million and the supply shock and, and what will happen when that happens. You're also talking about 31 million here. You have similar things where people have you know, lost their opportunity to convert their old tokens, the same as Bitcoin, or well, not the same as Bitcoin, but people have lost their Bitcoin, you know, lost their keys to their wallets. And so there's a certain number of Bitcoin that will never come back. And so that supply shock also comes into play for me, and there's no plans to ever mint anymore. And so I, I think that that's going to be a big deal one day. And we've yet to really see if, if supply shock plays a big role in the alts, but I think you're right in this one. When you have a supply in the in the millions, especially in the in the tens of millions, I think there's a good opportunity for a supply shock. And I think there's a good opportunity maybe within the next four to five years. Especially if they can add some utility on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm just I, I, just saying the bigger it go, the bigger it grows, the more flexibility they'll have in terms of creativity. Um, and we don't know. There's a lot of blockchains right now. We don't know who exactly is going to make it. I, I feel confident this one's going to be around. And as the other smaller ones drop off, it, it's only going to make the ones that survive healthier for me. So yeah. I, I, I agree. And again, we're not financial advisors, but we have to say this. In a couple months, you might be looking back at this episode and just be like, oh, my God, it was <laughs> what price? Because, <laughs> you know, 500, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility we could get back there. It really isn't. And I, again, we're, we're not throwing these crazy numbers up. We're not trying to, you're not like some of these YouTubers, you know, we're not, we're not saying it's going to get to 2000 or 3000 crazy like that. I mean, it's been, you know, right before Thanksgiving, it was at 544. So, you know, if you're getting in what 141 right now, could it double in a month uh, if we have healthy BTC? Yeah, I, I think it really could. Uh, again, not financial advice, but I think this is an excellent coin to pay attention to. If it's not on your radar, 
put it on your radar tonight. Uh, watch BTC. And we're, we're, Friday could be an amazing show either way. If we break 39.6 resistance, you know, it's going to be, it might be draft time. <laughs> but even if we go down to 32, it might be draft time. We might just have to have a mini draft either way. You, because you there better, might be you better get that first pick. You better get that first pick. Otherwise, I'm coming for e-gold. <laughs> Mr. Foma, anything else to leave our uh, viewers with tonight? No, I, I don't have anything. I, I, I'm envisioning a lot of green candles, not huge green candles, but a lot of green candles in February. Uh, February, traditionally 86% uh, green or at least above 13% anyway, according to James at Invest Answers. And uh, remember, you're trying to beat inflation. So if you look at a coin like eGold, that'd be a great one to beat inflation, even in a slow or, or maybe even a down month, because keeping your money in savings is losing your 7%. All right, guys, you have a great rest of the week. We will see you on Friday for Mr. Fomer, the Zazie Crypto. Have a great night, everybody. See you.